The Alan Handelman Show. That's right. Uh, can you handle it? Coming up in just a little bit, my good friend Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong. We'll find out what's going on with Tommy. And coming up next, I'm looking forward to talking to Dr. G. She's the medical examiner who you might watch on the Discovery Channel. She has a great show. And she has a new book out called How Not to Die. What you should know about Because people die for stupid reasons. It's good to have you on the show. Well, thank you, Alan. It's really a pleasure to be with you. This is interesting. Well, let me just tell everybody who you are. Maybe they've seen you on TV. Well, I'm, uh, you know, Jane Gervai. I'm a medical doctor. I am the chief medical examiner for Orange and Osceola counties, which is basically Orlando, Florida. And I've been medical examiner for 20 years, and I have a TV show on Discovery Health called Dr. D Medical Examiner. That's it. And a brand new book called How Not to Die by Dr. G. And this is interesting. I have about uh, five or six things I think people are going to find fascinating because there's a lot of, as you go through 1,100 or so autopsies a year, you realize there's a lot of things that people die from that's not necessary, right? Oh, absolutely. You know what I tell people is we, you know, we can't do anything about the things that are inevitable. We can't do anything about some things that just happen to us, true accidents that are unavoidable or illnesses that we get that really we have nothing to do about. But there are people that make their own bad luck. And, you know, life's a series of choices. It's choices, your genetics, your luck is really what determines your fate. I can't do anything about the, the uh, or genetics or some of the just, bad luck but i can't i don't have to make bad luck and i can make good choices and that's what the book's about it's about how the lessons i've learned from the morgue and the bad choices that a lot of people make and how to avoid it all right let's get right into it the lessons from the morgue one common sense safety tip you say is don't drive around with the windows half open in the car it's interesting explain that well what I, you know, it's a little tidbit taken out of the book, but what that's all about is it's actually safer to drive with the window up than down. One thing is you get, uh, things can d- get flown into your car and distract you. I've had several people die from bees coming into their car and and then distracting them and they get in an auto accident. I know this because the, 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 uh, uh, passenger still survives and tells us what happened. Oh yeah, and I, and I know people in real life that uh, you know not, nothing that was deadly, fortunately, but yeah, a fly or a wasp or something, yeah. Right, and so it's it's much better to roll it up. The other thing is that cars are pretty much engineered uh, to stay safe. They you can survive a rollover accident if you're buckled in, but if your window's down, a lot of times even buckled in, your arm, your head will go partially out that window. And it can get squished when you turn and when you roll over. Uh, and when it's halfway down, I see some of the more devastating injuries when those body parts try to go out. So um, if, if it's, you know, it's not going to cause you to die to keep it down, but it's just safer uh, to have it up. All right. These are great little tips on how not to die from Dr. G. This is a good one because I'm hearing a lot more about these new super bugs that come from a lot of times hospitals. How about how do you stay safe in a hospital with all these super bugs out there? Right. I have a whole chapter on that because, you know, there's no place more likely that you're going to get sick than in a hospital. And, you know, they look at there's about 1.7 million healthcare associated infections each year. Healthcare associated infections. You know, getting these uh, bugs from your doctor, from your nurse, or some of the procedures they've done to you. And we talk about MRSA in the book, methicillin resistant Staph aureus, and right. how it's spread. And we talk about trying to avoid that. And one thing I give that people don't think about is your doctor's tie. You know, he goes from patient to patient with that same tie, and what is the least likely thing he's going to launder and just wear again? The tie. Yep. And some hospitals in England have actually banned doctors from wearing ties because that, that tie can pick up the bacteria and spread it. Hmm. And some hospitals and even in Europe all also have 
man, doctors even wearing street clothes, they have to put a clean gown on, a new one between each patient. And their hospital rates of infections have gone down. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a real good point. Here's another one. You, this is interesting. You say neat freaks live longer, so it pays off to be a neat freak, huh? Well, you know, in a couple ways. One is the, the whole problem with falling at home. Uh, that is particularly devastating for elderly. There's about 350,000 hip fractures a year. And people don't understand how devastating that can be for the elderly. 20% of the people aren't going to make it from those hip fractures. They're going to die from those hip fractures. And a lot of that has just falling at home, falling on the clutter that's on the floor. Another way that being neat can help you is keeping your car neat. You know, those things that are loose in the car, can act as missiles when mm-hmm. you get into a car accident and actually cause a tremendous amount of harm that you may say, or, you know, survive the accident, but something comes and hits you in the head from the back seat. I mean, even garbage, you know, the, the food, the lunch, the papers from the uh, fast food restaurant, that kind of stuff piling up even. Well, even that, even that stuff. I'm really worried about people keeping, you know, tools in their car or, or heavy books oh, I or the laptops in there, things that are heavy that can really get thrown at you. This is interesting, too. Best ways to stay safe in your car during a thunderstorm. I thought if you're in, a, in your car during a thunderstorm, you're safe anyway, but maybe not. Real, no, you are. You're, partic- you're safe. Not People think it's because of those, you know, the rubber tires. It's actually because of the metal cage around you. The, the, the electricity will go around you because of that metal cage. Uh, your car acts as a metal cage, and that's why you don't get electrocuted if you get a uh, hit. So that what that means is don't stick your arm out the window. Keep the windows up with that. Um, and also, it's not best to stay in your car if your car is totally fiberglass. You don't have that protection then. Ah, interesting. All right, a few more of these. Let's see. Uh, I- I think, you know, one thing that I really want to uh, take home, and it's not just about accidents, it's sure. about keeping yourself ha- uh, healthy mm-hmm. and uh, not ignoring your symptoms. I have a whole chapter about, you know, when to go to the doctor, and, you know, it's not all that complicated. And, you know, what I tell people, is, you know, again, is that we learn from these stories. These stories are great motivators, and there's only a couple numbers you need to know. You need to know your blood sugar. Make sure you don't have diabetes. Make sure you don't have blood pressure problems. Make sure your cholesterol. Those are really the things we need to know because those are silent killers. They might not give you any hint that, that they're doing their deadly deed on all of your organs. You know, I give a story about a man who's carrying groceries up to his apartment. He's middle-aged, mm-hmm. a little overweight. The mm-hmm. uh, family tells me he's in perfect health. Never been sick a day in his life. He goes upstairs, he puts the groceries down, he sits in the chair, and he dies. He comes to my morgue, I do an autopsy, and I find a huge bleed inside his brain and a heart that's enlarged from chronic high blood pressure. He didn't know he had blood pressure. He didn't even know how sick he was because he didn't know that number. Wow. He didn't keep that under control. You know, when my secretary sees this show, as other people have, and she goes, oh, my gosh, now I realize why I have to take my blood pressure medicine, even if I feel good. Yeah, those silent killers, you're absolutely right. Yeah, that's a, that's a good wake-up. I'm glad you brought that up. I want to go over just a few more things from the book that are fascinating with a little bit of time we have. You say when we come out of the pharmacy, as we walk out, we should do something to keep us healthy? Check our medication. Make sure we've got the right medication. Now, you may not know that that's the right medication. You can do a couple things. You can ask the pharmacist, hey, you know, this is not this is the medication I normally take. Now it's looking different. You know, is this the right medication? Yeah, right. That's, that's a good idea. Because we've had, I've had, you know, there's about, believe this or not, there's about 1.5 million people each year are sickened, injured, or die from medication errors. And a lot of that has to do with a mix-up in the uh, names, in the confusion over the names. A lot of the medications sound alike. Mm, And a little boy die from the pharmacist uh, prescribing, you know, he was prescribed Ritalin, which is methylphenidate, but he was given, without knowing, methadone. Oh, man. And when when he was dead in bed, nobody knew why. And when we finally got his toxicology, the autopsy was negative, we get his toxicology, he has methadone in his system. Well, then we start the investigation, who gave him methadone? Until we checked his vial of medication that we brought in with the body, and the vial was filled 
with methadone instead of methamphetamine. Oh, jeez, man. And it, we traced it back to the pharmacy To the pharmacist, wow. And so, you know, that was something that was an eye-opener for me. I learned from that story. I either, if you're not going to even check the medicine, I give a website in my book about, you know, diff, uh, websites where you can see what these medicines should look like. At least be cognizant of how you're feeling it when you start a new prescription. How not is the website hownottodie.com, hownottodie.com? Right. My website for the book is hownottodie.com, but I give different websites in the book that might help you uh, with different things, mm. uh, like like the pharmacy, like where to go to see what this medication looks like. Right. All right a couple, I guess we already got about a minute left here. Uh, you have so many good ones. Why do men live less you know, don't live as long as women. What, is there a reason for that? Yeah, there's a lot of reasons for that. But some of it has to do with, you know, them ignoring symptoms. They tend to do that more than women. Some of it has to do with just the physiology. Some of it has to do with not making it to old age with your boneheaded things you guys do. You know, you use weird accidents you get into that we, I never see women in the morgue doing these things, mm-hmm. you know, aggressive behavior, uh, just not thinking through uh, some of these actions, like, you know, sitting on, the, uh, sitting on a, um, a branch, sawing the one above you, when that finally, you know, you saw it off, it comes down to hit you on the head. Yeah. Could you not have thought about that before you started? Uh, you're right. You're good. Really enjoyed talking to you, Dr. G. we got to do it again. Okay, Alan. It was a pleasure. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break here and then check in with Tommy Chong. It's been a while. Compelling talk radio. There is no defense. Stay tuned for more. More. There's no way to escape. Of the Alan Handelman Show. This is one of the best inventions from the C. Crane Company. It's called the Super Wi-Fi Antenna 3. It's a thing about, what, eight inches long. It looks cool. It has these suction cups on it. You stick it on a window. You can even put it outside. It's waterproof. And it pulls in weak Wi-Fi signals. If you're having trouble getting the Wi-Fi signal, getting enough bars, this amplifies it, and it's amazing. In fact, it has two USB plugs, and it's interesting. You could just use one, but if you want even more of a boost, just plug in both of them. So if you're at a hotel and you're trying to get a hot spot, they don't have good internet service, let's say, where you are, you can find a Starbucks down the road a mile and suck it in. It works. See for yourself. Go to the website, ccradio.com. Dot com. And by the way, go, even if you're not interested in buying this particular product, you got to see the catalog. Get a free catalog. It's absolutely free. You go to ccradio.com and just say, hey, I want that free catalog of all those cool gadgets. Here's their toll-free number, 800-522-8863. 800-522-8863. That's 800-522-8863. Ask about the Super USB Wi-Fi Antenna 3 and... Don't forget that free catalog. Attention taxpayers. If you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, it's a fact the government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There are new programs that are geared to help you dramatically settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone, but call 866 577 866-577-4676. When you call, you'll get free information on how you can reduce or eliminate back taxes, including penalties and interest. You can also be helped if you have unfiled returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you have entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. You can stop the collection process immediately. Call the Consumer Tax Hotline today for free information at 866-577-4676. That's 866-577-4676. Hey man, this is Tommy Chong. This is the Alan Handelman Show. He smokes, dude. Hey, Red Freak, wanna ride, man? Hey, man, come on in. Hey, what's happening? Hey, oh, yeah, man. How you <laughs> what a part of the rock culture. Yeah, Tommy yeah. Chong of Cheech and Chong. Alan Handelman. Tommy, man, it is so good to have you back on the show. It's been too long. It's been a long time, and I, I miss seeing your voice. Alan Handelman! <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys were rock and rolls, really, the first comedy act in rock and roll 
funny stuff that still holds up today. And yeah. uh, geez, and, man, and we were we were the we were the the stars. We weren't apologetic, you know. We weren't all oh, they're comedians, but they're funny. We were funny rock and roll guys. Yeah. It's interesting, in your book you talk about uh, the early days, something I didn't know about Cheech. He was an underground album music reviewer? Oh, yeah, big time, big time, yeah. He, that's, Cheech, uh, yeah, he, that's how he got the free records, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and got into concerts. You guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the great promo days, not quite like that today, though, you know. No, not anymore, not anymore. You know, Tom, I, 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 let, let's just uh, talk about this exciting news. Is it true that Tom uh, Cheech has decided to uh, to do it? You're going to have another movie project? We're going to do it all, although he doesn't want to talk about it yet. But, uh, you know, uh, that's where all roads from, from Cheech and Chong always lead to the movie uh, studios. One of the um, recent guests I had on the show is Keith Stroff. Of, of normal oh, normal yeah and, and he uh he, he he mentioned that he says you know something alan tommy was pretty and i knew this anyway because i know you so well but he said tommy was, was a pretty passive guy but ever since they put him in jail essentially for him doing no wrong he's become really an advocate they they're gonna be sorry they messed with tommy chong yeah they already are you know they they've uh, I, i've already been uh, <laughs> you know been the uh, the spokesman for the legalization and then criminalization that's what i wanted to see i want to see that you know take away the penalties first mm -hmm. and leave it alone you know it doesn't eat i mean keep it illegal you know that that way the prices stay high you know and and you know and there are people that won't smoke it because it is illegal and i kind of like that you know i don't mind that at all just take off the penalties you know because i was in jail with these guys you know they were doing like 20 years because they had a gun at their farm where they were growing their pot, you know, so these penalties are ridiculous. And for those who may not remember the, the full story, Tommy, it was no drugs involved. He wasn't busted for pot, which some might think it had nothing to do with it. It's because actually his son sold bongs through the mail. It was a setup. It was a kind of a sting operation under Ashcroft. So he took the rap for his son and uh, he spent eight months in jail. For nothing, for basically nothing. And one month in the halfway house. So, yeah, it was uh, it was a good experience, and it really helped the career. So, uh, you know, it was good on that that <laughs> level. You know, and I met a lot of great people. It was great on that level, and I wrote a book, so it was okay in that level too. Actually, I just heard from a, a friend of mine that I was in the prison, and in fact, I heard from a couple. They're all going, coming to the con uh, to our concerts, you know, with the Light Up America tour. Yeah, I was going to ask you, uh, uh, in jail, uh, what were some of the memories that you had that were pretty good? And it sounded like you just mentioned those right there. Yeah, there were some highlights, I suppose. A lot, a lot. And there was a lot of things I couldn't talk about. You know, I still don't talk about because if the prison officials knew how good uh, we're having it, you know, they, they had a tendency to, to clamp down on, on, you know, prisoners. Because what they do, they torture those guys in there for no reason, you know. They do? Oh, yeah, yeah, they do that. The prison officials, uh, you know, in this country, you have to become very hardened. And, and once, you, once you lose your, your, your humanity, then, then that's, how, that's how people get uh, crazy, you know. They, they go toward, you know, they start really uh, losing their humanity, and that's, that's the saddest thing about it all, you know. Can I ask you the inspiration for some of the famous bits you guys were uh, responsible for? Uh, some of them going back to the very first release, and that was the uh, the Dave. Dave, yeah, open the door. <laughs> that was an accident, you know. I had Cheech locked out of the mix, the the screening room, you know, where we I was taping our re rehearsal, and, and I wouldn't let him in, and he kept knocking. I kept saying, "Who is it?" <laughs> in that stupid <laughs> don't stoner voice. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, Cheech and I, you know, we, we were actually the first reality people you know, on the scene, you know. What you did with uh, Cheech and I, you put the camera on and you stood back and we we did the rest. And same as uh, our records, you know. That's why we only had an engineer. We never had a producer or, you know, you know, just a, just one guy that worked, uh, you know, the technical stuff. And, 
we 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 did it all just teach night yeah, the the improv so a lot of a lot of it was totally improv even though you had the basic idea for the bit and we'd change that if we felt like it you know and there was a few bits where they weren't going anywhere so we changed it and then the thing is you can find humor in everything you know if you look hard enough you know and and, and that's that that the thing is about humor it, 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 if it doesn't come easy you know it, it, then chances are you know if you work too hard on it chances are it's not going to work that great that's true you know humor i mean you can do research and you can be clever and you can but there's no, nothing like just looking around you and, and, and just picking up on on what, what's around you and that's what cheech and i were masters at i'm looking at uh, and i'm happy to say i got all your uh, albums but i i have a uh, big bamboo here and whose idea was it to put the big rolling paper in? Because to this to this day, that's what people ask about: is that rolling paper? Yeah, that was uh, Lou Adler. Lou Adler, and uh, uh, there's an artist called Craig Braun who who actually uh, created that whole concept. And I got all the original artwork. He gave it to me one time. He had it in his studio, and he was one of the still is one of the top a graphic artist in Los Angeles. He did a lot of album covers, and it was his idea. And Lou Adler was the one that really uh, brainstormed it. Lou Adler would find these people, and he was a very... And now Cheech is in, in that position. Cheech is, is like the producer of uh, like the uh, the uh, concert tour we're going on. You know, Cheech has a lot to do with picking out the people and the venues and, and making those decisions. So, and when does the tour start, or did it already start? It's it starts uh, September the 5th, and it goes through January. Oh, that's great. Is Shelby going to be a part of the act? Shelby's going to be opening every show. She's, she's uh, the opening act. Shelby is his uh, beautiful wife, who, yeah. who during that eight months, nine months that you were uh, locked up, Cheech and Shelby uh, would come on my show, and we would just rally the troops and uh, just talk about this injustice, including Jay Leno and I got on board, you know, and... Uh, uh, Tommy, you're you're a very special person to a lot of people, and what they people don't realize is, uh, you are you're not what that act was. The government thought you were exactly what you did in your act, but that's not Tommy Chong. Well, no, I mean no more than Arnold Schwarzenegger isn't the, the killer, you know, <laughs> or or the robot. You know, he may look like it, he may act like it, but you know, he's a human being. I'm a human being, and. And, uh, and by the way, I want to thank you, Alan, for for all the support that you uh, you gave me during my incarceration. Uh, you know, I really uh, appreciate you know you standing by me and you doing what you've done. And uh, you know, if Cheech wasn't available, I'd grab you and say, "Come on, let's let's do it." <laughs> and I'd be there with you, man. I know you would, Tommy. What can I say? Give my love to Shelby. Okay, thanks again, Alan Handelman. Possible to. Now oh, it's good to talk to uh, Tommy Chong once again. I want to thank all of my guests. Great show this week. Mark Scott Secree. We had uh, Congressman Ron Paul, Dr. Dean Adele talking about the marijuana marijuana in the news a lot so tommy chong only fitting also dr g and chris squire from yes and squack it next week we have dr marty becker and jesse ventura thank the radio station that carries this show and have a great week everybody Long Alan, 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 Al